Luke 22, 14 to 20, and we're going to talk about the four cups of the Passover Seder. So lift me up in prayer, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for praying for me. Now, two cups out of those four cups are in the Scripture in the New Covenant. Um, the one that you see in the beginning there to the Kiddush that is proclaimed and also the one right after the meal. But there are four celebrated and those are based on a scripture from Exodus 6, verses 6 and 7. If you're not familiar with why the traditional Jewish um, uh, Passover Seder at this time which is like, that's what Yeshua celebrated, uh, was a Passover Seder uh, with the disciples and proclaimed his own redemptive and atoning work. Uh, you look at Exodus 6, 6 and 7, where it says, um, therefore say to the children, I am the Lord, I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So that's the cup of the Exodus. I will rescue you from their bondage or I'll deliver you. So that's the cup of deliverance, the second cup. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. So that's the third cup, the cup of redemption, which is the cup uh, that, um, uh, that Yeshua took with the disciples after the meal and proclaimed uh, the atonement in his blood. And then I will take you as my people and I will be your God and then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from the, Egypt's, the Egyptians, of the burdens of the Egyptians when I bring you into the land. So that's the cup of the inheritance or the cup of the ark of the cup um, of, of them of the coming into the land of Israel. So it's the cup of sanctification, the cup of deliverance, the cup of redemption, and the cup of the inheritance are the four cups that are taken to before the meal when you have a Passover meal and two after the meal. And so the, those, are the, those are the four cups that we see there. Okay, so let's talk about it. The cup, and we can pull up verses, as Robert said now, whenever we mention a verse, if you're interested in seeing it on the screen, in addition to what's in, on the PDF there. The first cup is the cup of sanctification, the Kiddush. We are set apart for an unleavened walk with God. A thorough work of sanctification, not that we're, you know, that we don't still sin, but that God does a thorough work like the unleavened bread. You know, um, I can remember uh, the, the, my, the, the Passover Seder and that in my father's side of the family would last a long time and, uh, and I can remember my mother cleaning the house on the day of pa that Passover was going to come that, that evening. I can remember her cleaning the house. And we had, instead of the regular dishes, we had glass dishes, like, you know, that we used during Passover. So it made it very different that we ate on these glass plates and these glass cups and so forth and so on. And she took the, uh, those other and she put them in a box... And she put them away for, thank you, Rachel. She put them away for, um, for uh, the year, and she brought them, uh, I mean, for the week, uh, the, the regular ones, and she brought out the glass ones, and we had a special week of Passover. And uh, we didn't have any leavened bread in the house at that time during Passover, and basically it was matzah and related items in terms of that. And so we set apart, we set apart through a thorough work in our lives. Here's the scripture in 1 Corinthians 5, 6 to 8. Your glorying is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you are truly unleavened. For Messiah, even indeed Messiah, our Passover was sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, and leaven, you know, tends to get moldy and so forth. But the unleavened bread, of course, uh, does not. Nor the leaven of malice and wickedness. So this is a, a, a thematic definition 
that's grenaded to, to leaven. And you know, Yeshua said, you know, beware of the leaven of, of certain teachers in Israel that, that, that are not teaching truth. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, that's Rabbi Saul's verses from 1 Corinthians 5, 6 to 8. So get rid of stumbling blocks in your life. If there's something that's leavened, something that you have in your home that you know causes you to stumble or that you uh, struggle with in, in terms of uh, what comes into your home, just get rid of whatever it is the best you possibly can so that you can walk in the light. That he who thinks he, he stands take heed lest he fall. Cleanse the house. Prepare for an unleavened walk. Hosea 10, 12. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Cleanse the house. Walk in the light. Do something to get rid of something that is not what God wants you to do and wants you to have that's, that's causing you to stumble and you're struggling with. It's time to cleanse the house. The first cup is sanctification. The second cup is the cup of deliverance. I will bring you out, set you apart, sanctify you. This is all, again, from Exodus 6, 6 to 8. And I will deliver you. Freedom from bondage is God's work in our life. Deliverance comes from the Lord. And you can look at John 8, 31 to 36 right there. Then Yeshua said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my words, you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They said, we're Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Yeshua answered them, most assuredly I say to you, who, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and if a, slave, a slave does not abide in the house forever but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The son is who sets us free. If it's not one thing, it's another. Three categories that we can have. Genesis, uh, Genesis 3, 6 talks about that the woman saw the piece of fruit. It's not up there, but they saw the piece of fruit and uh, she saw uh, it was good to eat. It was good to look at and it was desirous to make one wise. That's the world. That something is, 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 is good to eat. It's the lust of the flesh. Just like these are matching verses from the one I'm going to show you from, uh, from John, uh, 1 John 2. The woman saw it. She said it was, it was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and desirable to make one wise. And she took up its fruit and ate. So that's the three things. And then let's go to that other verse. In the, in the PDF that we have there. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, she saw that it was good to eat. It's right in the same order. The lust of the eyes, she said it was good to look at. And the pride of life, it was desirous to make one wise in their own eyes. So there you go, right from the beginning of the scripture in Genesis. Where it says it was good to look at, it was good, it, it was, uh, it was, it was good to eat, it was good to eat, look at, it was desirous to make one wise. And you go all the way to the end of the scripture from 1 John 2 there, and you see the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. That's the world. All that is in the world, that's it. That covers everything in the world when it comes to the things that cause us to stumble. If it's not one thing, it's another. You say, well, I don't do those, those base things and so forth. No, you're full of pride. That over person over there, they, they, they struggle with this, but I don't. Well, you're already caught. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. The three categories. So the cup of deliverance is the freedom from bondage in our lives. God set us free in all three categories because it's all sin. And apply that in your life during this Passover season to get rid of these things. And you know you can confess them to the Lord and he can give you powerful freedoms from it. You can talk to other people and they can pray for you. 
You can ask God's forgiveness, of course, and he, he, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know where that is. 1 John 1, 9. The, that's the second cup, the cup of deliverance. The third cup is the cup of redemption. That's the one right after the meal. That's the one that Yeshua identified with as atoning work for us. You look at, at Luke 22, verse 17, and, and Luke 22, verse 20, which I don't have up there. But if you look at, at, Luke, um, at, at Luke 22, verse 17 and verse 20, you'll find that it says in verse 17, he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this divided among yourselves, for I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the king, God, king of God comes. Okay, so that's the first cup. And then you'll find that uh, the second is the cup of deliverance. The third cup is the cup of redemption. And there it is. He took a cup after the supper, right? After eating, which is exactly when we take the cup, the third cup. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. So the first cup is the cup of, of sanctification, and uh, that's cup one, related to I will take you out. The second cup is the cup of deliverance, related to I'll deliver you from Egypt. The third cup is the cup of redemption, I'll redeem you, and that's the one that Yeshua took right after the meal with his disciples. And then, uh, and then let me just talk about the blood of atonement anyway, uh, as well. The blood atonement righteously justifies the sinner. God wants us to be forgiven. He wants to give us the gift of forgiveness and redemption. It is given. It is given by God. We don't redeem ourselves. God brings us this redemption. It's given by God. Uh, these are three verses uh, you might be familiar with. Leviticus 17, 11. It says, the life of the flesh and the blood. And I have what? Given. I have what? Given it to you. God gives us. We don't, we don't pay for our own sin. We don't redeem ourselves. He redeems us. And it's the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. I've given it to you on the altar. And once again, in Isaiah 9, 6, the Son is given to us. Right? It's a gift. How many know that it's a gift? That's good. Baruch Hashem. All right. I can remember that one of the women believers in Philadelphia, Ann Clattenburg, years ago, years ago when I was there, and God used a movie because she'd been thinking about the gospel, thinking about the gospel. And then she saw, I think, Dr. Zhivago, and the last line is, it's a gift or something like that. I think it was that movie, maybe it was some other movie. And she, all of a sudden she realized, it's a gift. It's a gift. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, a son is given, right? And his name shall be called Wonderful Pella, right? Yoates, Counselor, Aviad, uh, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, um, I should say El Gibor, mm -hmm. right? Mighty God, uh, Aviad, Father of Eternity or, or, or Author of Eternity or Everlasting Father, and Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace, yeah? But it's, he's given to us. It's a gift. This is all came totally out of God's everlasting love. He wasn't obligated to do it. He, he could have he uh, just scratched everything and started afresh. And then John 3, 16, and again given. God so loved the world that he gave. Again, given. His only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the message. God gave us Yeshua. And so the third cup is the cup of redemption and the blood of atonement that righteously justifies the sinner completely, completely. I had an experience that I've often talked about. It was free. I made the commitment. The Spirit of God did the rest. He did the rest. I was sleeping right after I accepted the Lord. When I woke up the next morning, I could sense the work was, the Spirit of God was in my heart and life. That was just my personal experience. But I'm going to tell you right now, God did the work. I just opened the door. He, he who opens the door, that's that scripture in, in, in Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, 
I will come in. I, he is the one who does the work. I just open the door. The fourth cup is the cup of inheritance, the ark all the way from Egypt to Israel. The journey is Israel's historical experience, even to this day, because God is still working in the lives of Jewish people that bring them to come to know him. And also our messianic spiritual journey, it's the ark from Egypt to Israel, from the being brought out to, to being delivered and redeemed, to being brought in. And the rabbi, one of the rabbis said, we, he brought us out that he might bring us in. So I thought it was interesting that that rabbi says, it's in the Haggadah. If you have a traditional Jewish Haggadah, you'll find that sentence there that the rabbi said, he brought us out that he might bring us in. The ark from Egypt to Israel. And he brought us into a land of rest, the inheritance that we have in the Lord. And I'll just finish with that, this message. He brought us into a place of rest. And some people, they don't know what that in the world that's talking about. But you know, it says in Psalm 46, it says, cease striving or be still. And though those are the two verses. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. A rest. For he who has entered his rest has himself ceased from his works, from striving in our own work to be justified, to be acceptable to ourselves and to be acceptable to God, to, to earn it or strive for it in our own strength. It's a time to rest, ceasing from our works as God did from his. And obviously, we will do good works because that's what it says in Ephesians 2, that, that we were saved to do those things that God, it comes naturally in the supernatural in his reality. But we are not trying to prove ourselves to God and everybody else. We lay that down where we feel like we have to justify ourselves or, 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 or uh, earn our existence or prove ourselves. There remains, a, uh, a therefore, a rest. The people who know the Lord should be the ones who know what it is to rest in his presence more than anybody else, to be able to have a relationship with him so that because we wake up in the morning and we have that time with him, spend it in his presence, commit that day to him, and we seek to walk in the works preordained for us before the foundation of the world, as it says in Ephesians 2. We walk in that every day, and we walk in victory over sin one day at a time, moment at a time. We keep our eyes on him, and we rest in him, and we are, it says this in Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. Be still that I'm known. A lot of us, you know, we just can't stop. We can't stop, you know, uh, striving and, and, and uh, you know, trying to make it all work. But God says, cease striving and know that I am God. The four cups of the Passover Seder, cup of the Exodus, cup of... Uh, deliverance, cup of redemption, and cup of the inheritance. Those are the four cups. Amen? And for those of you who want to hear us, just uh, uh, watch us do a Passover Seder. We, can, we, we will do that on Beth Messiah's Facebook page and YouTube channel at 6. And so we'll have a Seder that way. It's real hard for families to get together. In the Jewish community, they're not coming together right now in families, in extended families. They are actually, there is actually kind of a release uh, in many, uh, among Orthodox uh, Jewish uh, Jews and synagogues, which they would never normally be allowed to use uh, equipment uh, uh, like uh, computers and uh, the internet on, on, on Shabbat or on a high Shabbat, uh, like a Passover or in the regular Shabbat, that they don't, they're not supposed to. 
but they've been given uh, freedom to do that, in this case, so families can worship on Passover together, uh, you know, this year, because, you know, the extended families aren't, aren't coming over houses, many of them. So that's kind of the way that is. Lord, we thank you for Pesach. We thank you for Passover. And we thank you for this synagogue. And we thank you for everybody who's here in this synagogue. And we pray we'd all reach out, get to know one another, love one another, care about one another, communicate with one another. We just give you praise, Lord God. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. We're going to close with a few songs. And, um, and that's the story as we, as we go now.